so after having orientation of the bony pelvis briefly and the having the and the division of the pelvic outlet into urogenital triangle anterior and the anal triangle posterior we can see in this image so this black pen it represents the imaginary line passes through the ischial tuberosity anterior part and this imaginary line will divide the pelvic outlet into two triangles triangle anteriorly situated and this triangle is the urogenital triangle and the triangle which is present posteriorly behind this imaginary line this is the anal triangle when we see the anal triangle we can appreciate that within the midline from anterior to posterior side there are three structures are present the most anterior structure this is the perineal body which is also called as gynecological perineum just behind the perineal body we find the anal orifice and just posterior to this anal opening one raphe is present and that extends from the tip of the coccyx to the anal canal and this raphe is called as anococcygeal raphe and within this anal triangle on the both the side of this anal opening these structures these are called as the ischio rectal fossa and these fossas they are loaded with the fat and this ischio rectal fossa it is actually a misnomer because it lies on the each side of the anal canal than that of the rectum so the proper name should be ischio anal fossa and nowadays some authors describe this fossas as ischio anal fossa now for the proper understanding of the anal triangle we have taken one coronal section and try to see the each side of the anal canal in that coronal section and when we see this section we can see the very brief image like this here in this image this is the coronal section of the bony pelvis and this is the iliac fossa and this is the pelvic inlet here this is the pelvic cavity and this one is pelvic outlet here within the midline this is the lower G gi tract which includes the rectum and the anal canal and on the each side having a sloppy muscular partition and this muscular partition it is the pelvic diaphragm this pelvic diaphragm it is going to be formed by the levator ani muscle as well as the coccygeus muscle and here in this figure we can appreciate this area as the ischio anal fossa or the ischio rectal fossa so now let's see this ischio rectal fossa in more detail in one detailed figure with the coronal section so here in this image this is the same coronal section with some detailed structures present within it and here this is the left sided coronal section of the bony pelvis and here this is the anal canal and this is the anal orifice and this is the coronal section so on the each side of the anal canal two sphincters are present one just nearer and inner side of the sphincter and this sphincter it is called as internal anal sphincter and most externally present sphincter and that sphincter it is called as the external anal sphincter and this external anal sphincter having three parts subcutaneous superficial and the deep part and these three are collectively called as external anal sphincter now in between these two anal sphincters internal anal sphincter internally and external anal sphincter externally the longitudinal muscle cord of the rectum lies and here in this figure this is the pelvic diaphragm muscle and this is particularly levator ani muscle just medial to the pelvic cavity one muscle is there and this muscle it is obturator internus muscle 
and this obturator internus muscle it is covered by one fascia and this fascia it is the obturator fascia when we see within this obturator fascia this because of the splitting of this obturator fascia one canal is going to form and this canal it is the pudendal canal and within this pudendal canal the internal pudendal vessels and the pudendal nerve which lies and within this pudendal canal the structures from above downward they are the dorsal nerve of the penis or the clitoris the internal pudendal vein internal pudendal artery and then internal pudendal vein again and the perineal nerve which lies within it and when we see this levator ani muscle it is superiorly it is covered by the superior layer of the pelvic diaphragm and the inferiorly it is covered by one fascia and this fascia it is the anal fascia and just inner to this obturator fascia and the pudendal nerve one more fascia is present and this fascia it is here pink in color and this fascia it is the lunate fascia and here with the fusion of the longitudinal muscle cord of the rectum with the levator ani muscle we can see this conjoint tendon and this conjoint tendon it is the conjoint fibroelastic sheath and this conjoint fibroelastic sheath it is formed by the longitudinal muscle of the rectum and the levator ani muscle which is going to passes between the different parts of the external anal sphincter and it is also going to pierce the subcutaneous part of the external anal sphincter and this space between all these structures this is the ischiorectal fossa which is loaded with the fat so with the all this information let's see the ischiorectal fossa in detail this ischiorectal fossa it is the space on the each side of the anal canal between the inferior surface of the pelvic diaphragm and the pelvic surface of the ischium so this is the pelvic surface of the ischium it is filled with the fat and acts as the elastic cushion to allow the expansion of the rectum and anal canal during defecation when we see the shape of this ischiorectal fossa it is wedge shaped and its apex is situated somewhere here which having the meeting point of the medial wall as well as the lateral wall where the lateral wall it is downward vertical while the medial wall it is sloping downward and medially when we see the measurement of this ischiorectal fossa it is vertically 5 cm it is transversely 2.5 cm and entero posteriorly where we cannot appreciate in this figure it is 5 cm also so the measurement of the ischiorectal fossa is 5 cm by 5 cm by 2.5 cm now when we see the boundaries of this ischiorectal fossa we can find on the lateral side it is formed by the obturator internus muscle as well as the fascia covering the obturator internus muscle that is the obturator fascia and by the ischial tuberosity when we see medially this medial wall of the ischiorectal fossa it is formed by the levator ani muscle covered by the anal fascia and the sphincter externus muscle when we see in front it is concerned with the transverse perine superficialis muscle and transverse perine profundus muscle and these are separated by the perineal membrane which is we are going to see in the urogenital diaphragm posteriorly it is concerned with the sacrotuberous ligament covered with the fibers of the gluteus maximus muscle
what we are not able to see in this coronal section. The apex is formed by the fusion of the anal fascia and the obturator fascia. So here you can appreciate the fusion of this anal fascia as well as the obturator fascia. And when we see the base of this ischiorectal fossa, it is formed by the skin and the superficial fascia. So all these are the boundaries of the ischiorectal fossa.